I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is AHA versus BHA. What on earth is AHA and BHA? How, how do they work on the skin? Are they safe for our skin? Which ones are safe? What percentages are safe? What products do I recommend? I'm gonna go through it all in this video. Now with skin of color, as you know, our skin is different to Caucasian skin. It doesn't just look different, the actual composition is different because the melanocytes are larger for us. That means that they produce more melanin and they are easier to trigger. Our melanocytes are unforgiving. One scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. And that pigmentation can last a lifetime. And when that happens on the face or on an area of the body which you then don't want to show or expose, it can really affect your, your quality of life. And that's the reason I made this whole channel is so that you are educated and empowered when it comes to your skincare and your wallet. I don't want you spending money on products that don't work, that are pure marketing, that are pure um, gimmicks um, or worse, something that can actually damage your skin. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. This is a video library for us and for our children to ensure we're purchasing the right products. So let's start off with AHA and BHA. They are exfoliating acids. AHA stands for alpha hydroxy acid such as mandelic acid, glycolic acid, or lactic acid. Then BHAs are your beta-hydroxy acids. They're fat-soluble acids. They penetrate into the pore to unclog the pore. And the one you've probably heard of is called salicylic acid. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail later on in the video. But starting off with what's happening with our skin. Now with age, our skin naturally exfoliates. So you are constantly shedding skin. It's pretty disgusting if you think about it, but that is how we get juicy, young, plump skin cells coming to the surface. The problem is with age, we have a lot less shedding and it takes a lot longer for one skin cell cycle. So for example, my son, who's four years old, will take about four days for his new skin cells to come to the surface and that's why he's delicious and I bite his face. <laughs> Whereas me, I'm 38 years old, it takes me about 40 days for new skin cells to come to the surface. And so this leads to a whole host of problems, including dull skin. So because it takes so long for skin to come to the surface, there tends to be more compacting of skin. Skin looks duller and there's less penetration of actives into the skin. So in addition, the skin is drier. I mean, there's so many things that go wrong with age, but basically uh, exfoliation really is important to keep our skin looking young and glowing. So how does chemical exfoliation work? It basically dissolves the bonds between the skin cells. And so when you wash it off, you will feel your skin looking smoother and like it's glowing. Wrinkles appear less and your pores appear minimized too. You're not going to physically see skin being rubbed off like you would with, with physical exfoliation. And actually that's better because what happens is you ha now have even exfoliation across the face or the body um, and you're only removing dead skin cells. When you use a physical exfoliation, you are also ripping away living skin cells, which then leads to micro tears and skin sensitivity, which is a bad idea for skin of color. Because what happens then is you get into this vicious cycle of trying to repair your skin, and then you're putting on actives like retinol on the skin, which can burn the skin, and now you're in a whole other host of problems, which I don't want you to enter. And this is why chemical exfoliation is controlled and it's safer for skin of color. So if you don't already know, by the way, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're here for me to answer your questions. Also, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, our private group, please do. It's called Dr. V Sock Family. It's a safe space for you to talk about skincare. I'm on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Mita Rattan. I'm also on TikTok as Dr. Mita Rattan too. Make sure you download your new free guide for skin of color as well. It's a little gift from me and the link is down below. Now let me show you what exfoliation, chemical exfoliation looks like. So here we go. So I just poured a little bit of chemical exfoliator onto the skin. So this one is exfoliate to glow from our range, the Dr. Mita Rattan range. And you can basically see it goes on like a clear gel and it just sits on the skin. Can you see that shine? And it just sits on the skin. You can't see any dead skin falling off. Um, the pH is between three and four, which is what it should be for skin of color for exfoliation. 
Um, and what it's basically doing is dissolving the bonds between the skin cells right now. And in about 10, 15 minutes, I, I would wash it off from my face and my skin would immediately look brighter. And that's the benefit of chemical exfoliation. Okay, so um, these are some of the mistakes made with exfoliation. Number one is double exfoliating. Some people will use a physical scrub, uh, such as a mitt, uh, or a, a normal uh, St. Ives scrub, for example, and then use a chemical exfoliant on top. And you might not even know you're doing it. So for example, you could scrub the skin and then put on ascorbic acid, which also exfoliates the skin, or azelaic acid, which also exfoliates the skin. Um, so you don't want to basically exfoliate and then apply a low pH acid onto the skin because that can lead to irritation, inflammation and hyperpigmentation. So we don't want to do that. Um, the, I would also say avoid any irritating ingredients at the same time after exfoliating. So I wouldn't use retinol after exfoliation. I don't mind using retinol palmitate, uh, tetrahexaldecalascorbate. Um, more less irritating antioxidants are great for the skin after exfoliation but don't use retinol which is an alcohol um, on freshly exfoliated skin because it can irritate and damage your skin barrier i'd also say make sure you exfoliate in the, at night time i've seen some mistakes happen where people do it during the day but now you're going out into the sun where your face is basically being assaulted by the environment you've got uv rays smashing onto the face you've got cold air if you live in the uk uh, and we have pollution and so these things actually require dead skin cells between you and the environment if you're showing your young juicy skin cells where they're where you have maximum penetration you're no longer protecting the skin cells below it so that would be a mistake also you don't want to do anything to your skin that might cause any form of tingling or irritation before you go out into the sun so please please save your exfoliation for nighttime um, in addition the other mistake i see is people um over exfoliating so this is not something you do daily you would do this once a week um, maximum twice a week specifically for AHAs alpha hydroxy acids so let's move on to who should be using AHA and who should be using BHA so your AHA are things like glycolic lactic and mandelic um, now AHAs are water soluble this means that they sit on top of the skin and they exfoliate on top of the skin uh, it works really well for scars, for melasma, for dull skin, for texture. Uh, it helps to minimize pores and it helps to um, re remove any pigmentation from the skin. Uh, it also helps to stimulate collagen to and hydrate the skin. So it has many, many benefits to AHAs. BHAs, on the other hand, are fat soluble. This means they penetrate into the fatty pore where fat sits <laughs> because to unclog it. Um, you can actually use it far more often than your AHAs. I'm happy for you to even use that twice a day if you have very oily acne prone skin. Uh, so it helps with congestion and I'm actually happy for you to use it even once once every couple of days from your early teens when you're starting to get congestion, specifically for skin of colour because if you allow your child to get acne, then they're left with the scars from acne, the pigmentation from acne and the atrophic scarring. So actually for our children, we have to be a lot more vigilant with acne than for Caucasian skin. Even you'll never see a Caucasian person with pigmentation left after acne. Whereas for us, that is that can last 10 years, um, which we don't want. So get your children onto a good skincare routine really from 11 years old. Um, that's when the sebum... Uh, production increases and really they should have a good routine with 2% niacinamide in it with your 2% salicylic acid in it and a gel based moisturizer they should be doing that from you know a young age okay so moving on that's a bit of a sidetrack sorry it's because I've got children and so obviously this is one's for all the mums <laughs> watching okay so uh, in addition BHAs are antibacterial which is great when it comes to acne a lot less irritation with BHA than with AHA alpha hydroxy acid and that's why I don't mind you wearing it twice a day um, in washes you tend to find it at about 0.5% and as a uh, leave-on exfoliator you, leave, you see it at about 2% now let's talk about correct percentages of AHAs for skin of color now 
they are all different. Glycolic acid has the smallest molecule and can be the most irritating for skin of color. It can fly through the skin quite quickly. And if you use a percentage that's too high, it can lead to hot spots, so burns in specific areas. So I always say maximum 5% of glycolic acid I would personally recommend for skin of color. For lactic acid, I love it because it's hydrating, but again, I would keep it at a maximum 7%. Uh, with mandelic acid uh, for sensitive skin um, it's brilliant and I would opt for maximum 10%. So for example when I decided to formulate exfoliate to glow for my skin I used 5% lactic acid, 5% mandelic acid plus 7% glycerin which is a water magnet because I wanted to the problem I find is actually after you exfoliate, your skin can feel quite tight and that we don't want for skin of color. We want the skin to feel hydrated, soft and supple. And so glycerin does that because it's it just holds water in the top layer of skin. Please do note that if you are exfoliating the skin, your skin is going to be more sensitive to UV and so you have to wear your, min your SPF 50. I obviously prefer mineral sunscreen. This one is the one I made specifically for skin of color with no white cast. It's called Insinkable. If you haven't heard of it already, the link is down below. But um, if you don't, you don't have to use that one. It's just the one that I made. Um, but whichever mineral sunscreen or sunscreen you want to use, SPF 50 really is key when you are exfoliating. And now to the product recommendations, the ones that uh, you, you know, doctor approved products. So starting off with your AHAs, my favorite is 10% lactic acid from The Ordinary. I love uh, also 10% lactic acid from The Inkula, so whichever one's easier for you to get your hands on. Uh, the next product I love is Mendeli Bright from Face Theory. Um, this uh, I also like mandelic acid 10% from The Ordinary. And if you have sensitive skin, I like Wish Trend 5% mandelic acid. Moving on to the BHAs, I love Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. It's a leave on product. I recommend it. I use it a week before my period because I'm prone to breakouts the week before my period, which a lot of us are when your sebum, uh, your sebum production increases. Um, the other product I like is the Inkula Salicylic Acid Cleanser. So it's a wash off product. So if you have sensitive skin, maybe start off with the Inkula Salicylic Acid Cleanser um, and build up your tolerance to salicylic acid, then move on to the exfoliator. Uh, I would always say make sure with any form of exfoliation, you moisturize because as I said before, you're essentially stripping the top layer of skin away, which can dry the skin and leave it feeling tight. So use a fatty, nape safe, moisturizer meaning no denatured alcohol no fragrance no essential oils so the three that i tend to recommend is one is cetraben uh, cerave and of course our cerapep from the dr mito rattan range specifically for skin of color whichever one you you want to use is fine but it really is important because you don't want to take the top layer of skin away and then allow transepidermal water loss to happen. You want to seal in any water and allow your skin to recover overnight and in the morning your skin will glow. To learn more about acids and ingredients, please purchase your Skin Revolution book. It's been published by HarperCollins and you can purchase it from Amazon. The link is down below. And to shop my skincare routine, which is for anti-aging and anti-pigmentation, specifically for skin of color, you can get the Dr. Mita Rattan Daily Range. It's a six piece kit and you, this is what I do every evening. And then three of these products I use during the day. The links for both are down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Take care, bye.